What's up, dorks? This, <laughs> this is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. We're going to talk about Space Jam 2, LeBron James. Oh, I hate that. LeBron James Space. Oh, this is noisy when you do that. It's like nails on a chalkboard. People are like, what's that from? Like, there was a kid on. He was on uh, Vine or something. Yeah. yeah. LeBron My James. My mom even knew what that was. So, LeBron James Space Jam 2. More Space Jam, no, I forget what it's called. New it's Generation, New, new Legacy, Legacy, whatever the hell it's called. The CG Space Jam. It's apparently not going to play in China. Okay, well, that's going to be bad for them because they've been trying so darn hard to get it over there. Yeah, this is what happens when you you pander to the CCP and, uh, you know, it's all for naught. So wait, let me get this straight. They don't care. So they did, they did run Fast and Furious over there, right? They did, yeah. So... John Cena, like, you know, had to apologize profusely and even tried to say it in Chinese, and they still ran their movie, but the, after LeBron James has been apparently, you know, sucking up to them for, you know, quite a while, they're not running it at all? Apparently not! So we're going to talk about that. That plan kind of backfired, right? This mm -hmm. is like, a, this is sort of like a Roadrunner Here's an idea. Uh, type plan. Stop making movies that depend on China. That would be the smart thing to do because they're making their own movies. Yes, they don't make monies that depend on you. I don't care. Money's movies. Movies. They don't make money that depends on you either. <laughs> they don't. They, they got don't make their, movies. They got their own money. Uh, yeah. They got their own movies making it's their own money. It's too early to drink. It's movies. So we're going to talk about this. We're also going to talk about how a character designer on this movie, uh, Dave Alvarez, who I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with. He used to work on Disney comics. Mm -hmm. uh, if I recall correctly, uh, he did not get credited for his work on now, the Space Jam sequel. Um, my one friend, Sarah, had sent some stuff over that was they were talking about this back channel on a place she was at. And they were saying that they don't always credit everyone in a lot of uh, the of these movies. Not everyone gets credited, but you know. Uh, yeah, 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 you should, you should. Anyway, before we get into it, we got a couple things here. One, please subscribe to the channel for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Over 208,000 subs. Yeah. Wait, they are? I believe so. Yeah. Yes! So thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, it's appreciated. And if you guys want to further support us, check it out. Last night, stealthily, we launched a pre-order campaign for the 15-inch Bubbly Steve plushie. That was a stormy day. That was. We took the pictures of yeah, that. it was. I'm looking in the background. I'm, I'm not supposed to be looking at a plushie, but I'm looking at the trees. I'm like, wow, that's stormy back there. It was there. a dark and stormy it's night. It's very stormy a lot here. It was. So Bubbly Steve is up. I'm going to put a link in the uh, the comments, and you can Yay! check out the Bubbly Steve plush. We made him bigger. We were uh, you know, looking at doing a Bubbly Steve before. He wasn't very big. People were like, no, we want big Steve. He's not big. little Steve. No, I said it too. When we got the little one, I was like, that's great. Uh, no, too small. It looks like a dog toy. It looks like a flipping squeaky dog toy for a smaller dog. But this this is this is for a big dog. This is a Steve you can cuddle or punch. If you don't like us, you can buy one. Go and punch money it. and then you can punch it. Then you can punch. You can do with Steve whatever you want. I just don't want pictures. Just keep whatever. It to He's yours. Keep it to yourself. All right. So here we go. Uh, LeBron James oh, has please, just for pledged, love of God, stop doing that. pledged allegiance to Chairman Xi for more than three years for the sake of Space Jam's Wait, revenue. Wait, he's, he's been kissing their ass for three years. Apparently. I knew he was. Whoa. I just I just didn't know to, to what extent. But you know what makes me, I find vastly entertaining about all this? They keep having these meltdowns about, oh, you need to put more diversity and more like representation of people into your movies. But then if you go over to China um, and countries like that, they don't they don't put diversity into their their films and things because they're making it for their uh, i mean grant in the u.s it's very diverse but um i just think that's funny so it's interesting and yeah was that what this was about was and you know again how you know how much does hollywood actually believe you know their their political opinions i mean look at look at what happened with um uh, well, Jackie Chan recently, mm -hmm. you know, but beyond that, like, I mean, that shouldn't surprise anybody about Jackie Chan saying he would he would join the CCP in a heartbeat because he he did the Karate Kid movie with Will Smith's kid. And it was basically an infomercial to visit China for mm -hmm. Chinese. It was like actually co-funded by like the Chinese Tourism Bureau or something like that. So I'm kind of like, it was like, yeah, it's great, guys. Hollywood has been kissing China's ass and take, well, mostly because they want China's money. They want China's um, money. And yeah. so they've been taking China's yeah. money for a while now to do these films. It's gotten so bad that the Department of Defense is like now putting <laughs> the kibosh on some things uh, because they weren't, they aren't going to work with companies that keep pushing it into China. But, you know, it's getting ridiculous to the place that now can they even separate themselves because 
I, well, now what, what's going to happen? Like a tick. It's embedded. They're they're going to drop China, and they're going to go after India. That that seems to be the new. You know what? That's probably true. That and the thing is, you're not going to be able to pander to both because they don't like each other very much, as I understand it. I don't know. I'm so, not really familiar with that, but I, I guess they don't like each other very. I much. I can't speak to that, but that's a very good point. So instead of kissing China's ass and expecting them to do what they want, now they can just go and you know get India to to, to give them the money and tell them what they can and can't do. They're just looking for a lot of people, a lot of people with money. To, to go to the movies, to subscribe to Disney Plus and Netflix and all that. So now that the next, it's like they've already tapped out the rest of the planet. So now Disney especially is going after India mm-hmm. with hot stars. They're like, there are a lot of people over here. But, uh, you know, from what we said in the previous video, apparently uh, Indian subscribers are only paying what amounts to like 45 cents a person or per household versus seven ninety nine here in the U.S. Is so, that because, but we don't, we don't know. Is, I think it's bundled or it was like. Well, I was going to say, offer. is it more because like, you know, I don't know what their conversion for money is like, you know, some countries, you know, make less money because. Our money you know, is not worth it. Our money keeps getting inflated the hell out. You know, they keep raising the prices on things and like other countries, you know, what's like 10 bucks here might be like a dollar there. And it's the same yeah. thing, you yeah. know, depending on their incomes. All right. So anyway, here we go. It's not on schedule to be released in China. Um, yeah, they said that the, the movie actually got really bad reviews. We'll talk about the reviews. Yes. It did beat Black Widow, though. Yeah, that's even more sad. That, you know, that was, that's what everybody's laughing about with the Black Widow thing. I, I covered that on um, Pirates and Princesses, is that, you know, in the first week, it only did, it did 30-some uh, bill, or million, billion, yeah, million. And that was above the twenty million they expected to do. They only yeah. spe- they paid out like one hundred and fifty million for this something, something like that, yeah. and they were expecting twenty. They got thirty one. That was a win, and it, that just that amount beat Black Widow second week. So yeah, so here we go. The film isn't on track to be the financial success LeBron James and Warner Brothers had hoped, either because China has yet to greenlight the film. Uh, for release. So they have it. They're holding it. What's going on? They're not releasing so, it. But they might. So they possibly, might. Possibly, maybe. Okay. Possibly, maybe. They kinda, they, basically, they need it. They need China to take it or they're effed. Yeah, it doesn't look. I mean, you think at this point they would already have the green light for yeah. it, though, as much as they were lobbying. They're probably they're like, all making that face right now, which is why everybody's making use this that face. Picture, like, oh, shit. Yo. Yeah, it's, it's kind of humorous because LeBron James has been kind of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, courting China's friendship. Put it that way. Uh, without China, Space Jam 2 is likely to lose several hundred million dollars. Uh, as they noted on Twitter, Space Jam costs 200 million to oh, make. 200 million. I thought it was 150. Yep. But 200 yeah. million to make, and the market is expected to earn only 60 to 70 million without a release in China. Well, even if you release it in China, I don't think you're going to make up the 140 to 130 million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, they are they are fans of some of the of the the you know Looney Tunes characters over there, aren't they? I believe so. Well, well if people listen to us that, that live in China, let us know. Are they fa- you guys fans of the of the Warner Brothers characters over there, the Looney Tunes? I don't think I don't think YouTube's allowed to 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 play in China. I think I remember. for real because we've yeah. had people come on here and say they were from. Well, there. they must be. Doing okay, well, you're if you're in the United States or someplace else right now, you're and allowed to watch you know, our videos. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it depends. They, they, they heavily censor over there, so I don't know. I, I mean, I know a lot of American cartoon characters are popular over there. Uh, the Little Mermaid is popular over there, as I understand it. And um, well, the redhead version of the Little Mermaid. You know what would be hilarious? Pepe Le Pew. What if Pepe Le Pew was the most popular Looney Tunes character in China? Would they put him <laughs> back in the movie? No, it's too late now. It's too late now. They cut. They cut his scene. They cut the the girl that, that was, poor actress. Is she seen. lost her gig. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is really interesting. So if it doesn't play in China, if China decides not to give it the green light, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars they're going to lose on this movie. So uh, yeah, good luck with that, right? So anyway, um, the movie's not getting great reviews, 30%. Well, but it's an 81% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which, yeah, you know, right from the get-go, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is not exactly reliable. It's very easy to game Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Well, people say it's basically a commercial for, like, all of Warner's IP library, you know? Yeah. Oh, and then over here, over here, Snake Eyes uh, only is at 53%. That doesn't surprise – well, actually, I think at 53%, that might actually make Snake Eyes the best G.I. Joe movie. Yeah, that's – that's. You know, <laughs> they keep saying they said – they're, they're either in their trailer like, it's the best G.I. Joe movie yet. And I'm just like, that's not a very good reason, marketing pitch, whatever, to get people to go. And that's like, it's the best of the three. That's not saying much. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we have to see it. I mean, it might be really good. I don't know. But I am not watching this movie because I have zero desire to see Space Jam. I have said that since the beginning. I have zero desire to see Space Jam. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I really don't. I mean, it's on HBO Max. We can watch if we want to. I just, I really uh, not am not interested to. in it. No desire. But uh, speaking of Space Jam drama, there's some drama. Now, this this doesn't surprise me because this happens a lot in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But yeah, character designer Dave Alvarez wasn't credited for work on the Space Jam sequel. Okay. So the Puerto Rican artist took to Facebook and Twitter to air his grievances. Last night, me and my family sat down to watch Space Jam. My kids were excited to see the movie Dad helped make, only to find out that my name was omitted from the final credits. Oh, that's that's terrible. And your kids are watching, too. Kids get to watch Dad not get any credit. He continued, I feel devastated. I worked hard in summer 2019 to help the crew with a lot of designs that were actually used in the final product. When I began my career, one of my goals was to see my name on the big screen, and that moment oh, was taken no. off from me and will never awful. come back. That's bullshit, and it's also very awful. That That's some awful bullshit. It's awful bullshit. Uh, speaking of cartoon brew, Alvarez says this is the first time he has not received credit for his work. Oh, um, that would suck. That was like your one thing, and you were so excited, and you worked so hard. You had your whole family sit down to watch it. This is your name. And then it wasn't there. Maybe it was an honest mistake from the company, he says, but... I was asked for my on-screen name for the credits many months ago, so it was disheartening to not see at the end. Well, maybe Devil's Advocate, maybe Warner Media, with all the problems they're having, all the layoffs, maybe they they got rid of the people hey, that were in charge of the credits. They can flip and update the Cats movie with a, one push of the button or change the Harley Quinn the st- the title with one push of the mm-hmm. button. Why can't they add his name to the credits and just send an updated version? That is true. Or anybody else that they accidentally forgot, accidentally in quotes or a question mark, they could fix that and send it right back to the, to the, stu- to the theater. Or to HBO Max. Or yeah, whatever. they could. They could because it's, it's digital, right? Everything's right. digital now. Alvarez's tweet has received a lot of engagement with Good. over 75,000 likes at the time of the writing. it's not okay. It's not okay. The hashtag credit Dave Alvarez is taking off. The artist says he's humbled and grateful for the support, but notes that others working in animation right. have suffered the same indignity. Yeah, the real hashtag should be credit all yeah, artists. Yeah, that's what I was – My Sarah was talking to me about. She was sending me some stuff there talking about it, and other people had said they have been on other projects – and they didn't get the credit. Or some of the people that were doing cleanup or different things like that didn't get the credit. I think it was the Mary Poppins movie, the animation, and everybody didn't get credit that was supposed to. I'm yeah, trying I think, to remember. I think it was that one. I think I heard that. The funny thing about the Mary Poppins movie, Mary Poppins Returns, um, one of the only funny things about that movie, because it wasn't very funny, was was they actually had to go out and bring back some of the old crew mm-hmm. because Disney didn't have anybody on staff that remembered how to work in 2D. So they had to go find all these guys they fired, all these people they fired, yeah. and bring them back. How, like, oh, yeah, hey, I, you know how we said everything was going 3D like 10 years ago and we, we laid all you guys off? Yeah, we need you back now because we're going we're gonna to milk Mary Poppins. It's very short-sighted anyway because they, <laughs> yeah, no. Chim, chim, that's a, that's a, that is a different movie. Um, no, it's really sad anymore. Like Things like that are, I can think of other techniques that use in art or in, in filmmaking that they change it, but then they don't keep teaching it so that people will remember how to do it because it always comes back around that they need it. Yeah. And then there's nobody to do it. Yeah. It's like, well, then maybe you should, you should think it through a little bit. I mean, I would love to see... Well, I, I can't really say I'd love to see Disney do a lot of 2D animation now because I think they're they're going to pretty much ruin everything they touch. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it is disheartening. Like, you made an entire career out of traditional animation and the studio that, that laid the groundwork for that entire industry, you know, pretty much kicks you out the door. They're yeah. not going to do it anymore. I mean, how, how insulting is that? So apparently Warner Brothers did this with Green Eggs and Ham, too, on Netflix. It sounds like it happens a lot. Yeah, and uh, here's a Peter DeSavy. DeSavy, I don't know, who designed characters for Finding Nemo and Ice Age, said, very sorry to hear this. Dave, it's a bitter pill and one I've had to eat more than once. It's painful and frankly infuriating. How hard is it to give credit to whom it's due? Uh, Alvarez is a veteran comics and animation artist who has been involved with Looney Tunes since the 90s. Yeah, I'm 95% sure he worked on Disney Comics, too. That we've crossed paths at some point. A uh, series he worked on and had been credited for as a character designer include HBO Max's Looney Tunes cartoons, Cartoon Network's Looney Tunes show, which I love, by the way. I love the Looney Tunes show. We, somebody was talking about it on Twitter the other day mm-hmm. and they said it doesn't get enough love because it was very kind of 
sitcom Seinfeld take on yeah. Looney Tunes. I actually liked you it. You like Seinfeld, so that's why. Yeah, I liked it. I thought I thought it belonged on like Adult Swim or something, but I know a lot of people are like, I hate it. I'm like, I know. You're allowed to hate it. You're totally allowed to hate it. I'm glad. I'm happy You're for you. You're allowed to like it too. I'm happy for you that you hate it, but I actually thought it was pretty funny. And, uh, I'm happy for you that you hate it. I'm happy for you that you hate it. I can't tell you, I can't tell anybody, given what we talk about in this channel, I can't tell anybody they're not allowed to hate something. Well, that's just it. I, I always say, like, people get, like, fights or whatever about, like, one person likes, one person doesn't. Well, you're allowed to like it. You're allowed to not like it. That's completely fine. It's how you behave around it. You know, like, you, you know, telling people they have to agree with you or else is the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, he's worked on pretty much every, every you know, Looney Tunes, everything the last, you know, couple of decades. And uh, yeah, he got cut out of Space Jam. So there you go, guys. Um, we don't even know if it's going to play in China. So it might not matter. The Chinese aren't going to know. America could be missing. Well, it sounds like they, they need it to play every place they can possibly get to play just to break even. Yep. Yep. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.